Welcome to Focus. I'm Kyle McCormick. My guest this week is Marina Levinet, Professor of Media Studies. Professor Levinet joined UC Berkeley in 2006, and her teaching subjects include mass media, film and TV, and visual communication. Levinet's research interests include science metaphors and monsters in popular culture, and how communications networks shape everyday life. I spoke with Professor Levinet about media and politics and popular culture. Hey, Professor Levina, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. You're welcome. Glad Appreciate to meet you. Um, let's get to politics first and just, you know, get that over with. Um, this has been a long presidential campaign. Uh, looking back uh, at this campaign, what's been the biggest change since maybe as recently as 2004? Well, definitely YouTube, without any question. In 2004, YouTube did not exist. And the culture that YouTube introduced into a presidential election, I think, is remarkable. Um, it really made presidential uh, campaigns and the candidates very much aware that any of their actions and any of their uh, words or anything that they do can immediately be um, circulated. Uh, how powerful are blogs? We hear a lot about them in the news, but actually how powerful are they in terms of shaping public opinion? I think right now tremendously. Um, there is more and more access of, blog of bloggers to press conferences. There are some really powerful ones. Daily Cause is one of them. The Huffington Post is really powerful. Politica is another one. And I think there is, I mean, of course, I can put together a blog and no one will care. But there are certain bloggers that have become increasingly more powerful, especially in this new media age, and especially to reach the younger uh, voters, especially. Mm -hmm. Let's get off politics. Okay. That, that might be refreshing. Uh, I want to ask you about movies, because I know you do research in that area. Um, specifically about the horror genre, it seems like the newer horror movies are um, mostly about like torture and kind of showing torture in really epic ways. Isn't that a departure from um, sort of the horror genre as it has been historically? When you look at torture porn, um, there is something about it that's very much responded to the general feel and the mood in the country right now. Right now, quite honestly, this country is not the best of shape and it's not the best of moods either. And torture porn, especially emerged after the Guantanamo scandal and after um, the Iraq war. And I think it is directly reflective of the way that um, those pieces of, uh, of history and those pieces of culture has really affected our state of mind. Because in the country where a president of the United States can go on TV and defend torture, it's no wonder then that gets expressed in movies in the shape of torture porn. Right. Do you think it's unhealthy for people to watch this stuff? I, I tend to stay away from uh, polarizing issues because I'm sure there are people who will watch that stuff and be really deeply affected at it by it on the level that's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And there are people who watch who watches that stuff that can look at torture porn and just laugh about it. Mm -hmm. However, is it healthy for the con for the culture? Is this a healthy culture that we live in as expressed by torture porn? I would say not. Now, there's so many topics in media and we just don't have the time to go through all of them. So I kind of want to do a lightning round. <coughs> I okay. Just, I throw, <coughs> I'm just going to say a word or a phrase related to the media. And if you could just give like two or three words, first reaction that comes to mind. Okay. I will try my best. Okay, here we go. YouTube. Young. The liberal media. Awesome. <laughs> the New York Times. Smart. Talk radio. Mm, limited. Rupert Murdoch. Complicated. Fox News. Bad. MSNBC. Equally bad. <laughs> <laughs> CNN. Somewhat less bad. Mm -hmm. Horror movies. Remarkable. Zombies. Very cool. And finally, have I done well? You have done very All well. Right. You pronounced my name correctly, which is always <laughs> a big plus. All right, that means a lot coming from a professor of uh, mass communications. All right, All right, professor, thanks so much for joining us. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Take care. All right. Well, that's it for this edition. Special thanks to Professor Levinet. Tune in next Friday for another edition. And in the meantime, stay focused.